Tonight we're beginning a series of lessons that I hope that you have been giving thought to. I hope that you have been spending time in prayer, not only about the lessons themselves, but more importantly about the importance of the subject matter. And I'm speaking tonight, of course, about the eldership, God's design for the church. We want to do things according to Scripture. We want to have a proper organization as the Bible sets forth. Therefore, it is with that in mind that we're going to begin this series tonight of several lessons, and I don't know yet the number that we're going to do, dealing with this most important subject. Now, as we think about elders, we're going to be looking at several different aspects, not only what the Bible says as far as qualifications, but we're going to be noticing some things that must be avoided. So throughout this lesson, we're going to be looking at positively what the Bible says, and then we're going to be looking negatively at some things that we must be careful as we examine ourselves, as we examine men who will one day serve as elders, because there is so much involved, not only in regard to the fact that a man who serves as an elder is going to give a perhaps a higher reckoning of himself on judgment, but elders, as they serve a congregation, are going to provide the guidance, the leadership. Therefore, we want to make sure that that will be the proper kind of leadership, the right direction, if you will. Now, we understand as we begin to talk about the organization that every congregation, and we're going to get into this as we go through this series, but every congregation was to have elders. And if we are to be like the New Testament church, then we must go to the New Testament to find what they did. And as we look at the organization of the local church in the New Testament, one of the most apparent things is the simplicity with which God ordained the eldership. Now, when you begin to compare the New Testament pattern with what man has come up with, you see this simplicity. We find that many religious groups today have a literal hierarchy. Of course, we know as we examine Catholicism that it was patterned after the Roman system of government. As we examine many of the denominations, the man-made churches of our day, we find a very complicated, a very sophisticated form of government. God's plan, on the other hand, is very simple. Not only is God's plan simple, but it's functional. God ordained that two or more men, and those qualifications are set forth in the New Testament, are to work together following the teaching of Scripture. It's not bogged down. It's not something that is difficult nor impossible. But instead, the eldership is very functional as God ordained it. And again, we see that it's vastly different. It is so different that as we are teaching someone the gospel, if we sit down and begin to study with them, in that study, it's very easy to point out the hierarchy of denominational leadership and compare that with the New Testament. And what a contrast it makes. And this is almost, without exception, almost every religious group is so very different from what we find outlined in Scripture. Now, in studying any Bible subject, it is important, it is essential that we eliminate all preconceived ideas, prejudices. And as we study this subject, we need to be careful that we are allowing the Word to instruct us. The proper approach to any study of Scripture, to any subject, is to go to the Bible with an open mind. We must be careful that we don't go to the Bible to prove something we already believe. We need to go to the Bible to see what God says. And as we do that, as we open our study, we want to do that even today. I want to remind you quickly of just three passages here, beginning with Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. We find here, this is the household of Cornelius. And among other things on that occasion, 
we find the Apostle saying of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. In Romans 2 and verse 11, there is no respect to persons with God. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 21, we find something similar. He said, these things we are to observe without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Now, as we, as we look at these three passages, as we think of the fact that God is no respecter of persons, we are reminded of the fact that God has given us the Bible... He has given us a book that we can understand and we don't, we don't have time to go off on a tangent, but we can notice a number of passages showing that we can understand the Bible. We can understand it a lot. And as we begin our study tonight, it is with that in mind. Now I want to make a couple of observations here as we begin. First of all, there is a trend, perhaps not just in our nation, but maybe even worldwide, to reorganize God's plan with the church. And in doing this, that plan includes eliminating the eldership. Eliminating as, as such deacons as set forth in the Bible and instead substituting boards, committees, leaders, oftentimes even some calling themselves evangelists are calling for evangelistic authority. They're making themselves a one-person leader. I didn't say one man because often in the religious world that might be a sheep, a female preacher. And they're calling for something other than Scripture all the way around. There is an unwillingness also on the part of some Christians to acknowledge the authority God has given elders. Now I want to stop here for just a moment and emphasize this point. As we at Lay Lake begin to study, as we begin to delve into Scripture concerning the eldership, it's not enough to appoint leaders, but we must determine that we are willing to be led. One of the designations, and we'll look at this in a little bit more detail later, is that of a shepherd. Elders are called shepherds. And as Christians, we are sheep. And we understand that sheep must willingly follow the shepherd. We find today that some of the problems that have occurred, especially over the last several years, have resulted in the fact that the sheep have stopped following the shepherds. We must determine that as long as the shepherds are in harmony with the Word of God, that we're going to follow. Otherwise, God's plan will fail. Not because His plan is wrong, but because of the hardness of our hearts. So as we begin, we need to understand that there must be a commitment on our part to be the kind of sheep, to follow the shepherds. Now, one other thing here that we need to be reminded of as we begin, and that is the law of God is unchangeable. God's laws are immutable. They have not changed. The plan that God gave as recorded in Scripture in the New Testament is as valid today as it was when it was written down and recorded by inspiration. What the Bible says on the subject of elders is just as binding as what's taught on any other subject. What the Bible has to say on this subject is just as binding as what the Bible says on faith or repentance or baptism or worship. And we must look carefully and we need to study prayerfully these important thoughts from Scripture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, Paul said, Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively, and this is the New King James, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that ye may learn not to think beyond what is written, that none of you be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. Now notice, we must learn not to think beyond what is written 